All right, so uh, we were discussing the so called implicit function theorem and uh, basically the implicit function theorem uh, for example uh, uh, in uh, two variables uh, says that uh, if the derivative with respect to a particular variable is non zero then uh, you can solve you can solve the equation uh, you can solve the equation for that variable okay. So uh, I stated the implicit function theorem and I will try to uh, prove it and I also uh, uh, told you that the implicit function theorem is uh, stronger than the inverse function theorem okay. So uh, so let me uh, write it as the proof of the implicit function theorem. This is the proof of the implicit function theorem, right? So, um, so let's recall what we started with. So we have, uh, uh, say, D uh, is a domain in C two. Okay, uh, D domain, uh, which means it's an open connected set. an open connected set but mind you it is a subset of uh, uh, C2 okay and uh, uh, maybe the arrow is not from C2 but it is from D so let me uh, D is sitting inside C2 okay and uh, I am having a function uh, so I call the two variables the two complex variables as z and w okay and I have a function f defined on this domain so it takes the point z comma w to f of z comma w okay so it is a complex valued function of two complex variables all right and uh, assume first that uh, uh, for every w in the uh, uh, in d if for every uh, w in d fixed for every fixed w in d so let me write that again carefully for every fixed w in uh, uh, for every fixed w okay uh, f of z comma w is analytic in z okay so you see if you if you fix a if you fix a w fixed value for w then there will be values of uh, z for which uh, uh, this function uh, if you see if you fix a w then this becomes a function of z okay and uh, you can make sense of this as a function of z uh, and what will happen is uh, of course for every z such that the point z comma w is in this domain all right of course this is not defined for all values of z it is only defined for all those values of z such that the point uh, z comma w is in this domain okay. Now for all those values of z this is a function of z okay and the fact is it is an analytic function of z that is a holomorphic fu function of z this is what we assume all right. Um, assume also also that uh, uh, for a point is it not comma w not in D the following things happen number one f of z not comma w not is 0 okay that is uh, this is a point uh, this this point with coordinate z0 and w0 is a 0 for the function f number 2 uh, you assume that do f by do theta okay 
why I am writing tau is because there are two in variables involved right but actually I am fixing the second variable I am finding the derivative with respect to the first variable which I can do because it is with respect to the first variable it is an analytic function it is a holomorphic function which means it is a differentiable function so I can derive I can take the derivative and I take this derivative and evaluate it at this point z dot comma w naught and that I assume that the derivative uh, is non-zero okay I assume that the derivative so all I am saying is the function has a 0 at the point z0 comma w0 and the first uh, and the func and the function uh, and the derivative of the function with respect to the first variable z at z0 comma w0 is non zero okay then the implicit function tells you that in a neighborhood of w0 uh, uh, you can uh, solve for ez as a function of w okay this is what so let me write that then the implicit function when the implicit function theorem theorem says that uh, uh, we can find g of w for w in a neighborhood of w0 such that f of g of w comma w is 0 okay which means what you are doing is which means you are saying that you can solve for f of z comma w with you can solve for the z such that f of z comma w as a function of w in other words let so let me write this in other words we can solve for z is equal to g of w for w in a uh, for 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 uh, w in a neighborhood of uh, w not and and uh, z in a neighborhood of z not basically uh, so the the whole idea is a function of two variables as a 0 at a point with respect to the first variable if the derivative is non zero at that point then you can solve for the first variable as a function of the second variable in a neighborhood in a suitable neighborhood of the uh, uh, point corresponding to the first variable and a suitable neighborhood of a point of the point corresponding to the second variable this is what it says right. So in fact uh, uh, of course I have stated with uh, this for the first variable but you can state it for the second variable also okay. So if the uh, so the general idea of the implicit function theorem is you have function of several variables and assume that the partial derivative with respect to one of the variables does not vanish then that variable can be solved for as a function of the remaining variables in a suitable neighborhood that is what it says so in this case the first variable is z and the partial derivative with respect to the first variable does not vanish so you can solve for the first variable as a function of the second variable which is the second variable is the remaining variable and in fact the, the truth is that this holds for several uh, variables not for just for a function of two variables it actually holds for several variables and of course there is also a real uh, you know uh, there is a there is a version of this for real differentiable functions also which is the usual implicit function theorem for differ real uh, differentiable functions okay. So here I am considering a complex function of two variables but you can also consider a complex function of n variables similarly I can also consider a, a real differentiable function of n variables and the statement of the implicit function theorem is always the same it is just that you can solve for that variable with respect to which the partial derivative does not vanish that is all okay. Now let us see how this is uh, achieved so uh, so 
you know the the first thing I want to start with is uh, uh, see now you see f of uh, uh, z comma w naught is uh, an analytic function of z of z okay it has a 0 of course analytic is the same as holomorphic okay complex differentiable in a neighborhood uh, it has a 0 at z equal to z0 because f of z0 comma w0 is 0 that is our assumption so z0 is a 0 of this analytic function and mind you this is not this is not a constant analytic function because its first derivative with respect to the first variable is non zero at that point okay so since the first variable is non zero what it tells you is that this zero is a simple zero and it also tells you that the analytic function is non constant uh, considered as a function of the first variable okay uh, since uh, so th so th this is by uh, assumption 1 and by assumption 2 since uh, uh, do f by do z uh, okay do f by do zeta zeta comma eta at z not uh, if I put w not here at uh, z not comma w not or just let me put it as z equal to z not at zeta equal to z not is not 0 okay. So, you take this function as a you freeze the second variable uh, you free if you put neta equal to w naught then it becomes only a function of the first variable you take the derivative with respect to that variable and then substitute the point z naught comma w naught I mean which essentially means you have to substitute z naught because you have already plugged in w naught. Then uh, the first partial derivative is not 0 implies uh, what it implies is that it tells you that uh, the the uh, 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 the function uh, f of z comma w naught is a non-constant analytic function. It's a non-constant analytic function of of z because had it been a constant analytic function, then its derivative would have been zero, which is not the case. So it's a non-constant analytic function of z, and with a simple zero at z equal to z. Okay, and the simple the simpleness of the zero is precisely the fact that uh, the derivative does not vanish. If the if the derivative vanishes, then you know the order of the zero is more than one. Okay, so the, that the derivative does not vanish with respect to the first variable tells you that in the first variable the 0 is a simple 0 okay. Now you know that the zeros of a non constant analytic function are isolated so I can find a disc centered at z0 and uh, 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 sufficiently a small radius so that for all points in the disc including the boundary circle the function does not vanish okay uh, except at the center of the disc where it vanishes that is I can isolate that 0 by a closed disc okay. So uh, uh, since the 0 uh, uh, the zeros of an analytic function are isolated there exists rho positive uh, and such that f of z comma w naught is not 0 for all z with 0 less than mod z minus z naught strictly less than or equal to rho. So I can find this I can find this uh, rho okay uh, yeah but there, there is something that I should have told you earlier um, the function that I start with okay so this is this is, a, this is an assumption, assumption that uh, I should have told you but anyway uh, it is not late to say that. So the function that I start with this to begin with 
I at least assume that it is a continuous function in both variables okay I assume uh, uh, assume f is continuous assume f is continuous that is that is something that you assume it is a of course we do not want to work with functions of several variables which are not continuous so f is a continuous function of both these variables okay I mind you that is uh, in general that is very strong when compared to assuming that f is continuous separately in each variable okay so I am saying f is continuous on d okay now you see uh, to give you a picture of the domains of uh, z and w I want you to just recall the so called product topology you see uh, uh, recall uh, product topology uh, uh, on C2 which is C cross C you see what you uh, so you know the complex plane uh, which is R2 it has the same topology as R2 okay and the topology is given by uh, taking uh, for a base the open disks centered at a point and having uh, uh, positive radius all right and you know that uh, this is a base because uh, you take any open set in the complex plane it can be written as a union of such disks okay because any open set uh, if you give me a point of any open set there is a sufficiently small disk surrounding that point which lies in that open set and now if you take all such disks corresponding to various points and take the union you will get the open set okay. So the topology on on the complex plane is given by disks uh, as a base for the topology open disks okay. Now what happens in the product topology in the product topology what you do is that you take uh, 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 when you take a product of two topological spaces and make it into a topological space what you do is you do the following thing to prescribe open sets there. So what you do is you take uh, you take a open set in from each topological space okay you pull it back uh, by the projection maps okay and you take products alright and then you and the union if you take unions of all such products they that will give you all the open sets okay. So uh, all I want to say is that any if you give me any point uh, in 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 the plane uh, I, I mean in C2 then you know you can you can uh, you can uh, and, and if it is inside an open set then you can find that point sitting inside a product of disks which is in that open set okay this is this is a fact from topology. So, so if so you know if uh, is it is it not comma w not is a point of uh, is contained in D which is contained in uh, C cross C uh, which in contained in C2 C2 which is uh, uh, so you know I will even put z comma w uh, c cross c and there are these projections p1 the first projection projection onto the first co coordinate p2 is projection onto the second coordinate okay. Then you know there exists uh, well uh, uh, I should say uh, rho uh, there exists rho and uh, uh, lambda positive such that such that uh, you know uh, the ball centered at uh, the open ball centered at uh, z prime radius rho cross the open ball centered at uh, w prime radius lambda uh, is contained in d this is uh, this is a fact from the pro pro from the definition of product topology where where of course where uh, you know uh, the 
disc centered at rho uh, disc centered at z prime radius rho is the set of all z uh, such that uh, mod z minus z prime is less than rho and uh, the disc centered at uh, w prime radius lambda is the set of all w such that mod w minus w prime is less than lambda. So, it will contain a product of discs ok. So, this is uh, so this kind of uh, so what you must understand is that uh, uh, whenever you are working with a point uh, here you can always uh, think of a disc uh, you can think of this point as being as sitting into in a product of discs a disc centered at the first coordinate cross a disc centered at the second coordinate ok for sufficiently small values of uh, the radii right. This is because of product product topology and in fact product topology tells you that this these projection maps are actually you know the projection maps are continuous and the projection maps are even open maps they take open sets to open sets. So, uh, so the fact is that you know uh, if I take the image of the open set D under P 1 the result is an open set in C which will contain Z prime therefore, it has to contain a disc alright and if I take the image of under D uh, of P 2 I will get an open set again in C which will contain W prime and so it will contain a disc disc uh, uh, containing W prime alright and then you can choose these radii are small enough so that this product is inside D ok. Now, uh, so all I am trying to say is that you know uh, uh, when I say that you can find a row such that for all Z uh, uh, in a disc centered at Z naught radius row uh, f of Z comma W naught is defined it makes sense because uh, uh, z0 comma w0 is a point of d and therefore you know i can find such a disk okay the image of d under the first projection will contain z0 so it will contain a disk centered at z0 right so let's let's go go ahead with this so the point is now i have i have this disk in which uh, this disk center z0 radius row in which f uh, as a function of z has only one zero at the center which is a simple zero okay so so in particular in particular uh yeah mod so f of z comma w naught you see this is not zero for z on mod z minus z naught equal to rho see on the on the boundary of the disc the function does not have any zeros ok. See this f of z comma w naught has a, has a only a 0 at z equal to z naught on the boundary circle it does not have ok. So, this is the boundary circle centered at z naught radius rho on this boundary circle it does not have any zeros. So, it is a uh, and mind you uh, therefore, if you take the mod function mod of f you will see that of course, I have forgotten to write uh, not equal to 0. Uh, so, f is not 0 so mod f is not 0 and mind you mod f is a continuous function ok and uh, this continuous function is being uh, uh, taken on uh, this compact set this is a circle which is closed and bounded. So, it is compact ok uh, in Euclidean spaces closed and bounded subsets are precisely the compact sets. So, you have a continuous function namely mod of f of z comma w naught on this compact set. So, it is uniformly continuous and it has it attains its bounds. So, it has a certain minimum value ok. So, uh, 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 so it has a certain minimum value, but let me not worry about that what I want to say is uh, 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 so I want to say that f inverse of c star which is c minus 0 contains uh, the product mod z minus z naught is equal to rho cross w naught ok. 
okay see <coughs> for each so this is the same as saying that the value of f at any z comma w not is non zero so long as z lies on the boundary circle this is what it says now i want you to you know really look at this diagram so here is uh, so here is my here is my d which is sitting inside c2 and you know uh, i have uh, i have z0 comma w0 here and uh, basically i have uh, in the uh, so i have these two projections p1 and p2 and under this projection into c i have this i have this uh, i have this disc uh, center at z0 uh, and radius uh, radius rho i have this disc and in p2 of course i have a uh, uh, i have disc centered at w0 and uh, uh, radius lambda okay which is uh, which is inside this copy of c I have this picture and the function is defined for uh, every z here and uh, every z there right. Now you see but you see this f inverse see c minus 0 is an open subset of c okay and therefore f inverse of this is an open subset of d after all it is a set of points where f uh, does not vanish f inverse of this is f inverse this is a complement of f inverse of 0 this is just the complement of f inverse of 0 so it is a set of points where f does not vanish vanish and therefore this is an open set this is an open set. So you have this open set which contains this product okay now the point about this product is this is a product this product is actually on one side this is the circle the unit circle on the other side it is a point it is a point cross the circle cross a point it is a circle cross a point and that is homeomorphic to the circle if you want but but the fact is that in any case it is I want to point out that this is a compact set this is a compact set because uh, uh, if you want product of compact sets is compact if you want to use Tikhonov's theorem but that is too much I mean it is very clear that this cross uh, circle cross a point is just the same as a circle topologically okay and uh, because a circle cross a point to if you project it onto the circle that will be a, a topological isomorphism if you take this first projection circle cross a point to the circle that will be a topological isomorphism a homeomorphism and under homeomorphism the image of a compact set is a compact set therefore in any case this is a compact set okay that is the fact I want you to remember now what you do is well you take any point zeta on the circle okay then at that point uh, if I take f of zeta comma w0 uh, you will see that f of zeta comma w0 is non zero okay for for any for any zeta with mod zeta minus uh, so I am yeah, I seem to be uh, okay let me not change the notation let me keep still keep it as z for any point z let me continue using z with mod z minus z0 uh, uh, less than uh, I mean sorry equal to rho okay uh, f of z comma w0 is non zero uh, this is something that we already this is what we noted first okay and you see uh, So what happens is that you see I have this point z comma w0 in D uh, I have this z comma w0 which is which is inside D okay and that is a point at which the function does not vanish so it is in this open set so it is an open subset it so it is a it is an open set it is a point not only in D but it is in this open subset of D set of points where f does not vanish and therefore there is a product neighborhood of this uh, uh, 
there is a product neighborhood consisting of a product of a disc surrounding this point and a disc surrounding W naught which is contained in this by whatever I told you about the product of function okay. So there exists uh, uh, delta Z uh, so I will I will let me keep using let me use rho Z greater than 0 and uh, uh, lambda Z greater than 0 such that uh, such that well so let me write it here uh, D contains F inverse of uh, C minus 0 which contains well uh, this uh, this disc centered at uh, uh, Z uh, this this centered at Z uh, uh, radius uh, rho Z and this this centered at W naught radius uh, delta Z. So this is delta Z. Uh, I am sorry. This is lambda Z. And here it is rho Z. So this disc centered at Z. This is radius rho Z. There is a disc like this. I mean, the point is that I can make this. Uh, I've assumed that the function doesn't vanish on the boundary of the disc, okay? And uh, that means that there is an open set which contains this disc, okay? Where the function. Uh, so you know, I can always choose a rho z sufficiently small given z, where the function doesn't vanish. So, so what will happen is d contains this the open set d on which f is defined contains this open subset where f does not vanish uh, that is an open set because f is continuous and the inverse image of an open set is open under a continuous function and this contains the pro this product neighbourhood which is which is uh, which is uh, 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 mod z minus uh, uh, so I now I will have to use another some other notation so it is uh, mod zeta minus z lesser than rho z cross uh, the on the other side it will be mod w minus w naught lesser than delta z lambda z. So it will contain this which uh, uh, I mean which of course contains the point uh, which of course contains the point well uh, z comma w naught where f does not vanish right so all i am doing is that uh, the set of points where f does not vanish is an open set because f is continuous and you take a point where f does not vanish this point lying with the first coordinate lying on the on this boundary circle the second coordinate fixed to w not then i am just saying that you can uh, find this point inside a product neighborhood okay uh, inside uh, this okay and ma and what you must understand is that uh, 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 the fact is that the main fact I am using is that this is an open set and a point inside an open set is always contained in a product neighbourhood in that open set that is the fact about the product topology that I am using okay. And now what you do is now you do this for all uh, you do this for all z varying on this on this circle you do this for all z varying on the circle then what you will get is you will get an open covering of this compact set because you have covered every point on the circle cross w naught. So what you will get is if I now vary z then all these product neighbourhoods will give me an open covering of this uh, product set which is compact and therefore uh, it, it, is, it is possible by the definition of compactness to extract a finite sub cover okay. So I should remind you that uh, the standard definition of compactness is that given any open cover uh, you can always extract a finite sub cover okay that is a set is called compact if it is contained in a union of open sets then it is enough to take only finitely many of those open sets and take the union and it will be contained in that uh, sub union okay which is called a sub cover. Cover simply means that the set is contained in the union of your collection okay and the fact that every cover has an op uh, every 
uh, cover open cover has a finite sub cover is compactness and we prove in a first course in topology on Euclidean spaces that this compactness of a set is equivalent to its being both closed as well as bounded. The boundedness is of course that it is contained in a finite uh, large enough ball okay uh, uh, that means all all of its points uh, if you measure the distance from the origin uh, the, the, the distances are bounded okay and the, the other the closeness is the condition that it contains its boundary I mean there is no uh, if you take a sequence of points in the set then the limit will also be in the set there is no boundary point limit point which is not in that set that is the closeness and we prove in a first course in topology that a uh, subset of Euclidean space is compact defined only if it is closed and bounded okay. So, uh, so that is to tell you that uh, for any open cover for this uh, admits a finite sub cover so you know that means that I can just take finitely many z i's okay and if I take finitely many z i's that means I will get finitely many rho z i's okay the union of which will cover this disc on this side and here I will get finitely many lambda z i's and among them I can take the least and then you will see that what you will get is that uh, an annular an annular open annular region containing this uh, circle cross a disc is where uh, the function will not be non vanishing okay you will get that okay. So, so let me write that down uh, the collection uh, uh, mod zeta minus z less than rho z cross mod w minus w naught less than lambda z uh, uh, where the collection let me or, 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 or let me write the collection of this the collection of sets. Uh, where uh, z lies uh, z varies on mod z minus z not equal to rho is equal to rho is an open cover covering of the compact set it is an open cover of the compact set given by this product mod z minus z not is equal to rho cross w not uh, and hence and hence admits a finite cover a finite sub cover okay. Thus uh, f inverse of c minus 0 contains an open annulus contains a uh, an open set of the form open annulus uh, centered <coughs> open annulus uh, centered at z not containing this circle mod z minus z not equal to rho cross uh, a disc disc uh, centered open disc at open disc centered at uh, at w naught. So, which is that is I can write uh, uh, you know I can write mod z minus uh, z not uh, greater than rho some I can write <coughs> rho plus epsilon I can rho I can put rho minus epsilon cross uh, mod w minus w not less than delta where of course this delta is actually the <coughs> delta is the minimum of the lambda the minimum of lambda z i uh, 
over i with z i uh, coming from the finite cover corresponding to the finite cover. So, so basically uh, all this is to say that uh, if the function uh, does not vanish on the circle cross this point then it cannot vanish on a open annulus containing the circle cross a uh, small disc surrounding that point okay that is that is what I am saying right. So, so, so in particular what it means is that uh, uh, for all w such that mod w minus w0 is uh, strictly less than delta okay for all w in this disc all right uh, the function uh, f of z comma w does not vanish with z here that is what it means okay that is f of z comma w is not 0 for all z in uh, uh, for all z comma w with uh, this condition uh, rho minus epsilon less than mod z minus z naught less than rho plus epsilon and mod w minus w naught strictly less than delta this is what happens right. Now so this is a uh, this is an annulus containing the circle cross a uh, disc centered at w naught the function does not vanish there we already know that you see uh, f of z0 comma w0 is 0 we know that where is that ah, there, there it is we have f of z0 comma w0 is 0 okay that is f of z0 uh, uh, f of z comma w0 has a 0 at z0 and that 0 is a simple 0 we know this okay what I am now going to say is that I am going to say for every w with w lying in that disc mod w minus w not less than delta I am going to say that there is exactly one z lying inside mod z minus z not uh, less uh, less than rho where f of z comma w is 0 and I am going to say that that 0 is a simple 0 namely a 0 of order 1 okay. So the claim is the following claim for every w with mod w minus w not less than delta there exists a z with mod z minus z not less than rho and with f of z comma w equal to 0. and uh, z is a simple 0 so I should say uh, 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 and in fact I should say the following thing and in fact and in fact Uh, z okay, z being a simple zero of f of zeta comma w and moreover z is given by g of w which is one by two pi i integral over mod zeta minus z not equal to rho zeta do f zeta comma eta over do uh, uh, zeta evaluated at uh, zeta comma w not w d zeta by f of zeta comma w okay. So, here is the claim. 
So all I am saying is that you take this W in this you take this W in this disc okay take W in this disc then I can find a Z inside this disc such that Z equal to G of W okay and this how this Z depends on W is that Z will be a function of W and what is that function of W it is given by this formula okay. So saying that f of z comma w is 0 and saying that z is g of w the z is given by g of w which is this function is the same as saying that f of g of w comma w is 0. So what I have done is I have solved z for w as z equal to g of w and this is the uh, so what I have done is the explicit equation f of z comma w equal to 0 has been solved as z equal to g of w for w in a neighbourhood of w0 and uh, this is being done uh, provided the uh, so you are solving for the first variable and remember that the partial derivative with respect to the first variable is not 0 okay. So this is the point so this is what the implicit function theorem says so now we will have to prove this we will have to prove this statement. And mind you, in all these, uh, the before I end this lecture, I let me tell you that it's not necessary that this G is analytic. Okay, you cannot you cannot uh, ensure that this G is analytic. Uh, but then, if you, uh, what we'll see later is that if this function capital F uh, is also analytic in the second variable for every fixed value of the first variable, then you can show that this G also is analytic as a function of W and uh, there is a nice formula for the derivative of g okay which we will see in the next lecture.